What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're going to check out 10 dumb WWE matches we didn't want to admit. We're actually genius, man. This should be a pretty good one. WWE and probably not even just WWE, WCW, even AEW, wrestling in general. They have dumb match stipulations or match types. When you really think about it, it's like, what the hell? This doesn't make any sense. And then it actually turns out to be quite entertaining. We recently seen a dumpster match between uh i want to say uh chelsea green and uh me me uh, me yim me yim um on smackdown recently and i didn't care about this match i didn't think it was going to be entertaining at all that was going to be a waste of time but it actually ended up being quite entertaining and i had a fun time watching that match so we're going to check out some of them instances where on paper the match sounds horrible doesn't sound good but it actually ends up being fun and entertaining I like dumb stuff. If you don't know, people get mad at that, but I can't help my brain. Wrestling still somehow seems to push the limits with that, though. Because, my gosh, the ideas that have come our way over the years. Yeah. You know what, though? Even then, sometimes WWE does get it right. So I am <laughs> Simon Miller. Here's the dumbest of dumb ways that were actually genius. Number 10, the crybaby match. I mean, what? listen to the name. Doesn't exactly scream WrestleMania main event, does it? No. Back in the day, people tore lumps out of this thing too. They hated it. It was from 1996 in the In Your House 6 pay-per-view where, yeah, Razor Ramon defeated the 123 kid. And as punishment for losing, the kid got dressed up like a baby. Well, we just covered him in talcum powder, which apparently was the same. I went and watched this today, though, and yeah, it's fine. The silly stuff only comes after the match is done and the work itself is great. Of course it was. Scott Hall and Sean Waltman are excellent. What the critics ignore is that Kid had actually been acting like a brat before all this, so he had justification too, and ultimately he got his. I thought that's what wrestling was meant to be. I would understand more if they were in diapers or there was a dummy on a pole or something, but no. It was just some goofy aftermath to embarrass the bad guy. Again, that was his job. So you don't have to like it due to your own taste, but an all-out disaster? No way. Number nine, the shortest Raw Rumble ever. What is the worst Raw Rumble? Most people will say the greatest Raw Rumble ever from Saudi Arabia because of the name. Or there's the one in 1995. There's more to talk about there. The reason it annoyed fans so much is because of the 60 second intervals, which meant it zoomed by. Mm. So it felt like you were on drugs. What you need to do is go look at the WW roster in the mid 90s though, and yeah, they were screwed before entrant number one. No disrespect to these guys, but Aldo Montoya was number 20 <laughs> and Mantar was 21. Why build that? Bro, Mantar is, that's such a wild name. Here comes Mantar down to the ring. What? <laughs> Up for an extra 60 seconds, you're actually more likely to get some hate. So it's actually something Vince McMahon should have used more as self-awareness actually came into play. And I tell you, that never happened. Shawn Michaels was the winner, which was the right move, so we just added in proper stars like Bret Hart, the British Bulldog, Lex Luger, and Owen Hart as and when is necessary. So sure, in comparison, it's not that good, but for what the WWF had, they used it in the right way. And it deserves more credit. Number eight, Jackass at WrestleMania. I know this one is true because I saw it firsthand. When it became obvious that Sami Zayn would face Johnny Knoxville at WrestleMania 38, however, there were face palms all around. People could not believe it. It began at the 2022 Royal Rumble when Johnny popped up as a surprise. So essentially, this mm -hmm. carried on for months. What happened? Sami Zayn proved he was an all-time performer and gave us utter joy in a wrestling ring. The rest of the Jackass crew added to the experience, and it is a genuine delight to watch. This match is, on paper, just sounds quite dumb, but it was actually fun and entertaining. Not gonna lie to you. Does it make a look of sense? Not really, but it was fun and entertaining. Like, it was an enjoyable match. Crowd was enjoying it. It was enjoyable, not gonna lie. All the beats work, and you'll laugh out loud when you should the perfect evidence the wrestling should always be a variety show again too it is all the credit to Sami Zayn. yeah everybody Sammy, played their part but his kid, this, this was his brain child then i said it was a mini masterpiece number seven the house of horrors the match between randy orton and bray wyatt at wrestlemania 33 did not work mm -mm. we did some weird things with overhead projectors mm -mm. most of the fans were confused mm -mm. it happens it meant we got to pay back 2017 and wwe announced a house of horrors match between the two but nobody knew what to think because what the flub was that it was however <laughs> yeah. full-on cinematic before the pandemic which counted uh -huh. for something yeah 
was actually pretty good. It certainly wasn't the greatest of all time entry, but it definitely inspired WWE years later. And as ever, Bray just got it. He knew what to do to make these things interesting. It helped that it was a B pay-per-view, which WWE really wasn't taking seriously at the time. Mm. Yeah. Jump forward to the future, and the company benefited from this template hugely. It made them realize what they could do when the world just stopped. I mean, it was basically them trying to... Um, I don't want to say copy, but they kind of got the inspiration from what the TNA was doing with the, the broken gimmick. Um, with uh, Matt and and Jeff Hardy, what they were doing with that, they kind of got that inspiration there, to be honest with you. So, um, that, it was okay. So it was okay. Um, but you can tell where they got the inspiration from. So. The sixth, the greatest wrestling match ever. Even Adam Copeland has spoken about how mad this was. It's impossible to have the greatest wrestling match ever. Yeah. It all comes down to taste. Yeah. Still, if we go to Backdraft 2020, where once again WWE was suffering due to the pandemic, we took a recently returned Edge and Randy Orton, told them to go and rewrite the game. Yeah, good luck with that. Now, maybe somebody out there thinks they nailed the stipulation, but you can just forget about it. The match is very, very good. Very and good. reminded you that the rated R superstar could still go after almost a decade no, away. WWE knew what they were doing too, as they needed to create that channel, which wasn't there because fans had vanished. And all the small touches we threw in were quite nice. The production team were allowed to go crazy. It's also one of the few bouts you can go back and watch now. I suppose elements of this helped the Thunderdome too. WWE borrowed a lot from here. What a crazy time. It was a good match. Uh, I, I definitely didn't like the fact they just kept, oh, it's going to be the greatest match, wrestling match ever. It, it kind of took away from it because they kept trying to force that narrative. All right, it was a really good match. They were hitting other people's finishers. I'm not going to sit up here and say it was the greatest wrestling match ever. That's subjective. But it was a really good, entertaining match. So. Five, the custody of Dominic Ladder match. Classic. So this was bonkers. But look, here we are Very in 2024 crazy. and we are still talking about it. SummerSlam yep. 2005 did divide fans though because how did this make any sense? None. Eddie Guerrero and Rey Mysterio were fighting over custody of a real human boy. <laughs> I'm not sure the courts are going to allow that. Yeah. The fact that condom is used it today justifies it for me, but also listen to who is involved. Eddie and Ray. Yeah. They couldn't have bad matches if they tried, so even though the stakes were ridiculous, they made it brilliant. If you like the OTT side of wrestling too, this had everything you need. It's a bit like Scott Hall and Sean Waltman. When you have workers this good, you don't have to worry about the rest. They will make it work. Yeah, they it's made it work. It's also really funny, so yeah, this is all good with me. And given what has happened over the last 20 years, it will give you some good damn memories. Yeah, no, this, that was a... Uh, that was a... Uh... <laughs> Funny stipulation, man, but the match was fun. The match was really entertaining. Once again, fighting over the custody of your actual child in a wrestling ring is fucking insane. <laughs> Number four, the gimmick battle royale. So if you watch my content, this won't surprise you. It is, as far as I know, the last appearance of one Repo Man in the WWE. Bring him back. It was WrestleMania 17 too, where we decided to allow a group of legends to compete in a battle royale. And look, it's not the best thing you'll ever see but it's pretty darn fun. Bobby the Brain Heenan is hilarious on commentary as he bemoans how slow the Iron Sheik is getting to the ring. <laughs> Some of the entrants here. Duke the Dumpster Drozy, for example. He wasn't exactly a legacy talent. Actually, Duke had only been off TV for five years because that's how fast the Attitude Era blew up. I'm not sure you'd need to do this at Mania again, but as an idea, yeah, it'll yeah. make you laugh, which should be the point. This is meant to be entertainment. You could even make it a Hall of Fame version, which would give some of the legends an extra payday. There's nothing wrong with that. And look, we do have 365 days worth of content to fill. There's no reason not to do it. Number I don't know about that, especially now. Huh? <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, for the time period, I guess it's a novelty, you know, to see some of the legends, but I don't know about that now. <laughs> Three, the blindfold match. Talk uh, about a stipulation that can go in wildly different heard directions. about this one. Picking who is involved is really, really important. Now, the worst to some people is likely Jake Roberts versus Rick Martel from WrestleMania 7, which gets good kicking these days. I do get it. But go and watch it now and remember what it's meant to be. I do think it's quite enjoyable. After all, the pair are meant to be blind, so why would they have a five-star classic? They quite clearly understand the assignment and ham it up, especially Rick. That dude is taking pratfalls like his life depended on it. The fans are into it as well as Jake decides he's just going to try and find that DDT and remember. Everybody knew it was stupid. 
Just make sure you're in a similar mood. I think this is what wrestling is all about sometimes, just thinking outside the box and ensuring we all have a good time. This certainly tickled me. It's a terrible thing to say. So let's go do it again. Number I mean, I'm sure as a kid, you know, younger, I probably would have loved this as an adult. I'm like, what the hell is this? But still probably would have been laughing and enjoying it. So at the end of the day, it comes down to if you're enjoying it, are, are you being entertained? Not going to lie to you. Wrestling someone with a blindfold on is incredibly stupid. But is it entertaining? That's the key. Number two, the jewel money in the bank ladder match. So we do return to the pandemic as WWE had to do everything differently, which meant the men and women's money in the bank happened at the same time. Given it was more of a mini movie than a match, it worked as we even had cameos. Brother Love was in the 2021. So weird. This was also done like a video game as you had to fight to the top of WWE yeah. HQ, but it did have another major upside. The concept didn't feel burned out by the end of the event as we only had one singular match. Now, WWE actually balances this quite well today, but one year, if you could figure it out, I don't think this would be the worst idea. It would also up the stakes, even though men and women are kept separate, it's still more bodies to get through. You can even take it a step further and have only one briefcase hanging from the rafters, meaning there's only one Money in the Bank holder for the entire year. That would send people nuts. So once again, it comes down to fun. Although Baron Corbin did literally See? kill people during this version. <laughs> Maybe don't do that bit again. Uh, I was waiting for him to say it, bro. It's when Baron Corbin killed Rey Mysterio. Are we just going to let that slide? <laughs> I'm sorry. Even though that's incredibly dumb, that's a incredibly hilarious, bro. <laughs> Rest in peace, Rey. <laughs> killed him, bro. Number one, we LC. So the reason you don't want to do this is because oh Hornswoggle and El Torito smashed it. Talk about taking what sounds like a stupid idea and turning it into a somewhat classic. It all comes down to how these guys approached it and the intensity they had, because you believe they wanted to win. That's half the wrestling battle. If they care, I can care. This went down at Extreme Rules 2014 and amazingly was in the pre-show. Everybody forgets that. But Swoggle and Torito saw it as an opportunity. Table, yeah, bro. this was really good. Why not? They knew how to work. So I'm not saying try to replicate this verbatim, but in terms of taking a fun gimmick and not turning it into a one-note joke, I mean, this <laughs> is the template. And you're probably laughing at me now. Yes, I am. Go and give it a chance. I promise you will be surprised. Not of any other dumb gimmicks that actually were quite good in practice. Oh please. my god, bro. <laughs> Some of these for me on this list, even though, you know, you you know, you're trying to have fun with it, it's still probably gonna be a no for me from even just wanting to watch it. Some of them, some of them. But comment down below, let me know, and I want to add get y'all opinion on this. What's a wrestling match that's a guilty pleasure for you? You know it's a dumb match, you know it doesn't make sense, but you watch it anyway, you go back to watch it. Because it's just entertaining. It brings some joy. It brings some laughter. It makes you feel good. It brings back some nostalgia. Let me know what match is that for you. If it wasn't listed already on this video. But I appreciate all the love support. Roll 2. 150k. I appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.